Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of Pro Tips. Today, we're gonna to be looking at bridge pin height. Now, for the Martin factory, our specs on bridge pin height are a maximum of 1 32nd and a minimum of 1 64th. Now, basically what that means is we're gonna measure that from the top of the bridge to the first knuckle on the bridge pin. And it can be anywhere within that range. So sometimes people ask, why does Martin traditionally leave the bridge pin so high? And the main reason is over time, with string changes and just the pressure of the bridge pin against the wood of the bridge and the bridge plate, it causes the wood to wear out. And we leave things high so it, it allows for that wear to happen. And you have more time before you need to have the bridge plate filled or the bridge holes filled or to maybe even go to a, a higher or a thicker bridge pin. Now what you don't want to have happen is the bridge pins just fall directly into the bridge and rattle around. Because they're loose, you don't have as much contact, as good tight contact with the string against the bridge pin and against the bridge plate. And what that could cause, it, it could make your bridge plate eventually wear because the ball ends of the strings will start pulling up into the bridge plate because you don't have a tight enough fit against the bridge pin. So we do have a product in our lineup that can actually help out with if your bridge pins are actually starting to get loose um, or if the bridge plate's starting to wear. That is why we have the marquee strings. Now the marquee strings feature a silk wrapping. Now that extra mass will actually help to get a tighter fit with your bridge pins and your bridge plate and prolong the inevitable so to speak, of having to have your bridge plate filled. There have also been questions concerning slotted bridge pins versus non-slotted bridge pins and whether or not to actually physically slot the bridge and your bridge plate on your guitar. Now traditionally, back in the olden days, bridge pins that were made of ebony or ivory or bone didn't have slots drilled in them. You can see this bridge pin is completely flat. So to compensate for that and to allow for the string to fit into the bridge, you would take a small file, different kinds of saws. Today we use a jigsaw to do the same thing. You actually slot the bridge and the bridge plate to allow there to be clearance for the string to go into the bridge. Now today, technology being what it is, most manufacturers use slotted bridge pins like this one. This is just a regular plastic bridge pin. Most of our models today have these bridge pins installed on them. You don't need to slot the bridge anymore because since the pin is slotted, it allows for the string to go into the bridge. I would recommend not slotting your bridge, or if you have a slotted bridge already, not using slotted bridge pins. The reason for this is you're allowing extra clearance for the string to pull up into the bridge plate and it could cause the wear to happen more rapidly. I would recommend that if you have a guitar with a slotted bridge on it, like an older guitar, um, and you want to replace the bridge pins and all you have available to you maybe is a set of slotted pins, when you install them, don't install them with the slot facing towards the neck of the guitar. Spin the bridge pin around, so you have the non-slotted side facing the neck. Now the reason that I would recommend turning the bridge pin around is because it lessens the area, lessens the chance for the ball end to pull up into the bridge plate. You don't want the ball end to pull up into the bridge plate because then it'll cause more wear and you'll start losing tonality and sustain. 